Well, welcome to this presentation on functional prototypes. I'll show you an example of a functional prototype, but uh, more importantly, I'll sh break this down into individual skills, five of them that you can use in creating your own functional prototype. So let me bring up something that's fairly complete. So this is not a final project. A functional prototype is a step in uh, what's called the, the success of approximations model. So it's a very, very important design step. And, and the idea is that it's crude. Uh, it prefers function over finesse. And the idea is to be able to present your ideas and show function so that everybody can get on board and what the vision is and it's not a blank slate so people don't project onto this things that were never intended by the designer so here we have something that i want to do on making maple syrup and i'll just very very quickly preview this in the browser so i've clicked on preview in the browser and what i have is a title which is an svg title and then I have this background graphic and I've thrown up some buttons here, some text buttons to essentially show function. Now, my idea, my final project is to actually be able to drag a thermometer into this pot of boiling sap and measure temperature and then later check sugar concentration by uh, using a hydrometer. And at some point, based on temperature and sugar concentration, I'll either stop boiling or continue boiling. I'll make a decision. So this is a, an example of a CCAF application. So there's a context, and that is, in this case, um, making maple syrup. It's an authentic context. That This is not a quiz. This is actually a, a scene. Uh, that one would expect to see of making maple syrup. And then the challenge is to make uh, maple syrup so that it has a density, a sugar concentration of about 66 bricks. Bricks is a unit. It's uh, a unit of sugar concentration. And then, uh, so the challenge is to make enough, uh, a good quantity of quality syrup uh, not to overboil it, not to underboil it. And constantly in this, you're making decisions. Should I stop? Should I continue? So it's very realistic. Now, we can check temperature. And, and here, again, uh, this substitutes for perhaps dragging a thermometer. So dragging a thermometer into this pot, there's a lot more work involved. And what we're trying to do is keep this very simple to show function. So I'm checking temperature. Here's the bricks. Here's the bricks level. It's at 30, so it's much too low. Therefore, we'll continue boiling. So we'll, now the only thing that did, and of course I could have all this stuff in the background that automatically increases temperature, increases sugar concentration. But the only thing I did is progressed to the next scene. So my continued boiling basically jumped to the next page in which where I have a, a different temperature, a higher temperature, a higher sugar concentration. And I can then, you know, is this good enough? No, it's not really, I'll continue continue boiling. And so I've now progressed to the last scene where I check the temperature, it's 219, which is great. Uh, that's my target concentration, we're good. And we produce 30 ounces of very good syrup. So this very, very quick functional prototype shows my intention as a designer. It, I'm trying to take this experience of making maple syrup and make it an authentic experience, make it an authentic learning experience, which follows this context, challenge, activity, feedback paradigm. All right, so let's put this away. 
And let's just kind of break down the skills. So I'll put, in my, put away my prototype. Now, I'm not going to try to recreate this prototype. I'll, I'll, what I want to do is just break down these individual skills. So I'll call this junk functional prototype. Click on OK. So I've chosen the activity maker template. And again, I've ex expressed this many times in the past. This is a Swiss Army knife. It's of Lodestar templates. It's a great template for making a simple functional prototype. Now, one of the things that I can do is use SVG graphics, scalable vector graphics. And the way I can accomplish that is click on SVG and I can type in some text. Again, my objective now is not to try to recreate that making maple syrup project, but I just want to show you. So if I want to bring in text, I can simply type in text. It's SVG text, so I can grab it, enlarge it. If I wanted to bring in an image, I could click on the image tool and bring that in. So I clicked on the image tool, then clicked on the canvas. Now what I want to do is fit, I want to trim away the excess canvas. So I fit the con content. So it looks at all the objects, creates a little bit of a margin around, and that's good. I saved the page. Perfect. That was step one. I can create my SVG graphics. Step two is always to, to, to make this responsive so that it'll play on different devices. I would I need to choose a percentage rather than a fixed width and height. So I'll do that. I'll hit OK. And now everything is taking up 90%. Now, when you create a functional prototype, oftentimes, so if we used our SVG tool again, oftentimes, you know, you can simply just use simple graphics here to represent things. If it's a slider bar that you're trying to represent, you might create a you might create this rectangle and then you know round off the corners, perhaps maybe too much. And then I can hold down the shift key, make a perfect circle, and then I can grab my tool here and so I can represent a slider if that happens to be something that I want to, to show. I'll go ahead and fit the content, save the page. And then again, I want to click on the graphic and choose a percentage. So I can lay things out on the screen using SVG. I created a new page by hitting this plus key. So I can select the plus that creates a new page. This page type is a text page type. I have a whole variety of different page types and this one happens to be a text. The next skill relates to images. I can bring in images. so. I showed how we can create a scalable, scalable vector graphic, but I can also import an image. I can choose Get Image. And I'll just bring this in. I said I wasn't trying to recreate my project, but just for the sake of simplicity and bringing in an image. So you need to bring in images by selecting Get Image. Don't paste, don't copy an image into the clipboard and paste it in because uh, there's some processing that needs to happen. And this is the best way to accomplish that. So click on get image, select your image, and then give it a give it a, a size using percentages. So with 80, this particular image takes up 80% of the screen. Click OK. 
and now I've brought in my images. So we can do that. Uh, we can also bring in uh, PowerPoint. You could export a PowerPoint as a PNG and import that in the same way. So you could export a PowerPoint and then click, click this image tool. And this will be a little tedious, but all I, I do have an exported PowerPoint. It's going to take me just a little, I, I have it deep in these folders. So bear with me for a sec as I go grab this image. So this, this was crude, but it was created in PowerPoint. This is, I'll go ahead and maybe change that to 90%. Now I have these images that I've brought in. One was generated in PowerPoint. One was a stock image. If I wanted to add function, if I wanted to add function to this particular image, make it interactive, I could do that. So let's say, let's take this particular graphic right here, which causes me to go backwards. That's what this represents. It's just a navigation. Uh, if I wanted to make that interactive, I would click on the image, select interact. I would click on the hotspot and drag it over top. I'm doing a right click. I'm going to choose a branch option. So Lodestar gives you a whole variety of branch options, but I simply want to go to the previous page. I'm not worried about the others. I'll then save, click OK, click OK. Let's see what we have so far. And let's see that particular interaction. So here's, now I could get rid of the scroll bar, but again, this is a functional prototype, so do I really care? Here's my image. And then here's the piece with the interactive, which causes me to go back a page. And I, of course, I could do that with this as well. Uh, let's say that I wanted to uh, display a pop-up as a result of clicking on this section right here, dead. So to reiterate, click on the image, click on interact, create a hotspot drag it over, size it over dead, right click, choose branch options. Now I'll click on execute command. You need to have some form of command in here. So I'll execute a command, but my only purpose here is to show a pop-up. So whether you agree with this content or not, it doesn't matter. The point is we need to select execute command in order to show feedback. I'll save, click OK. And now let's see that in action. Click on preview in browser. I'll progress to that page. And now if I click on this area, I get that particular pop-up. So that's how you can create a functional prototype. You can use a combination of SVG graphics, imported graphics. You can go into PowerPoint, lay things out, then import those as a PNG file. That would be my, my recommendation. You can then click on the image and add interactions. So for my final step, what I want to do is, is show, if you wanted to, for example, you know, submit this to somebody as a zip file, or perhaps import it into a learning management system, this is how you would do it. So you could choose export. 
So if you were doing a project for a class and you wanted to send this particular project, this functional prototype, uh, you know, perhaps put it in a Dropbox or assignment folder, then you have a couple of options. You know, for my students, what I've done is I recommended the SCORM 1.38 just to get people in the habit of choosing this very, very popular standard shareable content object reference model. The version is 1.3. So that is a recommended, especially if you're exporting to a learning management system. You could just export this as a simple zip. So if you wanted to put this on the web somewhere, you could export it as a simple zip, get it up into a web server, unzip, and then point to the index.htm page. So that'd be, then there are other options, but we won't worry about those other options right now. So I'll choose score mode point three. I'm gonna call this a functional prototype. In this case, the topic will be the same. Click on export. And now this particular exported project can be found in the Lodestar directory under exports under this name, junk underscore functional underscore prototype underscore v2 dot zip. So I could just simply go to that directory, grab that zip file, and put it in a Dropbox and all is well. So that concludes this very quick tour on the basic steps for generating functional prototypes. I'll go ahead and remember now to hide that scroll bar because I was too interested in seeing that. So thanks so much for watching.